Shalom, I came across this uh, interesting teacher from uh, Seifer Publishing Group. And I watched one of his videos and uh, I kind of like what I was hearing. So I was going to share this, see what you think. Group and welcome to another edition of Sefer Moments. I'm Dr. Stephen Vision. Today we're going to have a kind of an interesting study about Revelation 13, 18 and the mark of the beast. And in particular, this particular edition is entitled, And There Ain't No 666 Neither. And so that's what we're going to be discussing. We're going to be discussing this very poignant and very misinterpreted and sometimes a reinterpreted text found in Revelation or the book of Kizion, chapter 13, verse 18. And so we'll begin with, let us begin with the way that we have it set forth in the Sefer, and we will begin with uh, verse 16. And he caused us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Verse 17. And that no man may buy or sell, save that he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is chi C stigma. Now in the Sefer, we have it set out, or in the Sefer, we have it set out as the three Greek letters that appear in the Stephanus Textus Receptus. In fact, these three Greek letters appear in all editions of any Textus Receptus that you may find in Greek. And the question that we have before us today is, do these three letters equate to 660 and 6? And, of course, the larger question, which is the subject of today's discussion, do they equate to 666? Now, of course, this number is well known in the popular community, the pop world, if you will, and they routinely run around flashing 666 with their fingers or whatever they do. And, and then many people, of course, take the number 666 and they appoint it to a name. And they say, well, you know, Ronald Wilson Reagan, 666. Of course, this ignores the fact that the original text said it was 600, three score, and six. 600 would have to be the first name, it would have to have 600 letters in it to qualify as 666, 600 in the first name, 60 in the second, and 6 in the third. So obviously that's a patent absurdity. Yet nonetheless, we have several editions of the Bible that are available for your reading today, and that many churches already ascribe to that in fact use the phrase 666, or they have it in a connotation 666, without delineating 660 and 6, and that includes the NIV, the ESV, the Common Jewish Bible, the New King James Version, and the Orthodox Jewish Bible, all of which use the three numbers in a row, 666, which of course is confusing, and you have a number that say 660 and 6. That includes the NASB, the ASV, the Comprehensive English Bible, the Amplified Bible, the Dewey Reigns, um, the ISV, the International Standard Version, the Wycliffe, and the Luther. And then you have this, this phrase in 603 score and 6, which is found, in, of course, in the original Tyndale and the 1560 Geneva, the 1599 Geneva, and the 1611 KJV. The Etsefer is the only book that actually sets forth the original three Greek letters. And we do so for a reason, because first of all, there is an assumption that, there, that these three Greek letters, because they don't constitute a word per se, that these three Greek letters mean gematria. And gematria, of course, is the science, if you will, of applying numbers to letters. Like, for instance, in the Greek, uh, in the Greek numbering system, you would have first and second being expressed as alpha and beta. So 
If you're doing an alpha test, that's your first test. If you're doing a beta test, that's your second test. And so you have evidence that there is some Greek gematria out there. And the question is with the Greek gematria is, does it equate to the numbers that we see set forth in Kizion 13.18? Does it equate to those numbers? Well, you know, if you look at the modern Greek alphabet, modern Greek alphabet, you'll see that the sixth letter of the alphabet is zeta, not sigma, zeta. And so this kind of creates a problem for us as to how do we get 616 6? Because now remember with gematria, gematria does not flow as in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z as being 1 through 26. It doesn't work that way. You have the numbering system goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and then a thousand. Now, originally the Greek gematria, which was practiced and still is practiced in Hebrew, you have uh, numbers one through ten are Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zion, Chet, Tet, and Yod. That's one through ten. And then ten through ninety or ten through one hundred is Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samach, Ein, He, Sadi, and then Kof. 200 is Resh, 300 Shin, 400 Tav, 500 Kaf Safi, 600 Mem Safi, 700 Nun Safi, 800 Pei Safi, 900 Sadi Safi, and of course 1000 which is Alaf Tav, or the Et which you find on the cover of the Et Sefer. So that is your Gematria in Hebrew, but in Greek, you can see that we have a little bit of a problem because in Greek, the sixth number is Zeta, and the 60, the number that has the number 60, is Omicron, and then the number that has 600 would be Omega, Omega. So you set 660 and 6, you would have, uh, you would have Omicron, Zeta. But those are the three Greek letters we have. No, the three Greek letters we have are chi, c, stigma. Now, there is an ancient alphabetical formation that allowed for this numerology. In the ancient world, apparently, they included uh, this, this obsolete letter stigma as number six in the alphabet, which then would offset and put c, xi, c, as 60. And then you would move into 600 would then be chi, chi. However, there's a problem because under that system there is no 90. There is no 90 in that system. And of course, stigma uh, did not appear in that order. Okay, so we have a little bit of a difficulty. Now, when we look again at Revelation 13, 18, we see that there's also some other interesting markers here because you see it says, in 17, that no man might buy or sell, and that's really kind of the critical factor here, no man might buy or sell, but that he had the mark, the name, or the number of the beast. So there's three elements there, and you don't have to have all three, you just need one of the three, the mark, the name, or the number. Well, the word for number there in Greek is this word arithmos, arithmos, which actually doesn't mean a fixed number, it means an unknown number, kind of like an X, they get an algebraic equation. Well, if you look at the chi, you'll see that it is shaped like an X. Chi, it's shaped like an X. So that kind of tells you that the chi is an indication of number. Now, the last letter, the Greek letter, stigma, is very clear stigma, like a stigma, or if you were stigmatized, stigma to this day means that you're marked. You are marked for identification. You, you have a stigma, you have a stigma, you've been stigmatized like being branded in the, in the book, The Scarlet Letter. You, that was a stigma. So a stigma kind of means mark, which leaves us with this idea of C, this middle letter, meaning the name, meaning the name. And so it's very interesting because when, if you look at these letters, chi and stigma, you'll find that that is the first and last letter, letter of the name, or of the title, excuse me, Christos, Christos. So you see in the Greek, Jesus Christos, Christos, begins with chi, ends with stigma. 
but there's letters missing, and instead it's been replaced. All these letters in the middle of Christos have been replaced with this this letter that kind of wraps around like this, you know, got like four loops in it, which is the C. And the C uh, is a very interesting because it appears in its in its artifice, if you will, as a snake, as a snake. And so as a consequence, you have a snake or a serpent in the middle of Christos. So it's possible that this Greek mark uh, means that you have, that means Antichrist or something in the place of Christ, the serpent in the place of Christ. It's possible that that's what it means. It's also possible, as Wally Chubat has pointed out, that it reads in Arabic and it reads Bismillah in the name of Allah. And because this center letter C uh, appears in the Arabic and it's readable in the Arabic as Allah. So another interesting point. At any rate, one of the things that's a certainty in this book of Kizion and this verse 13, 18, is that 666, as in the number six, followed by the number six, followed by the number six, does not appear and is not accurate in any respect. The assumption that these letters are gematria, we believe is an assumption that is not necessarily justified by the text. Yes, you have the comment that says it's the number of the beast. However, if you go back and you look at the Hebrew, and we do believe that Revelation was born, was created in the in Hebrew, if you look at Revelation 9-11, for instance, Revelation 9-11 says that the, the beast coming out of the abyss, whose name was Abaddon, but in the Greek, Apollyon. It tells you that it was written in the Hebrew, but in the Greek, for you people who don't read Hebrew, well, the name is Apollyon. Now you have a similar issue here. So when you look at this phrase, and here is supposed to let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, and, and again, the Greek is... Okay, I'm going to uh, stop the video and, uh, for time's sake and start uh, uh, part two.